Come on, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Hope you're doing fine and dandy on this very wet Tuesday, the 8th of October. Uh, absolutely bucketing it down since uh, about, uh, well, I can tell you when, 4.13 last night or 4.13 a.m. That's when I woke up uh, to the torrential downpour. But still, we're not in Florida. So uh, any of you uh, Yanks over there, if you're listening in, I do hope uh, you stay safe. And uh, things pass you by without much ado, but it's, uh, it's looking like it's going to be a bit of a big one, uh, this next hurricane passing through. So uh, wish everyone well over there. Morning, Kay. How you doing, mate? Got your flippers on? Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. They, uh, there's this saying that rainwater is good for the hair growth, but I can confirm it's absolute bollocks. Um, <laughs> I could have told you that years ago. <laughs> I'm joining you, of obviously, to uh, to to wish everybody well um, um, with with those hurricanes uh, arriving. Please be safe, everybody. Um, it, it's it is a it is a nasty one coming uh, coming over. So um, hope everybody will stay safe and uh, and return to us. Uh, um, with having uh, having seen that it's perhaps not as bad as uh, as expected, let's uh, let's hope for everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. For the rest, uh, mate. Um, as I said in the room, there's a reason why uh, why uh, England is so green, right? We're getting enough water here. Yeah, there's, uh, there's always too much water, but uh, yeah, certainly no hose pipe bans for a while. But uh, anyway, yeah, my fish are loving it. Me less so. Right. Let's get cracking. Lots to get stuck into. Lots coming up uh, as well. We need to go over. Um, right. Well, first things first. China as uh, well, you could say China's disappointed markets, but I think you know, with hindsight being a wonderful thing, it looked like the market was built up its own expectations for this one, um, and then been disappointed when it hasn't got what it expected um, because we had the various Chinese entities, uh, authorities, NDRC and that sort of thing, and the China state plan are coming out with lines, but none of it added to the this uh, hopium trade that was going on. Uh, the China state plan is, is the main one. Um, they pretty much gave the usual waffle, saying we will promote sustained, stable and healthy economic development uh, in 2024-25. We will expand domestic demand and prioritise consumption. We will strive to boost capital markets. Um, so all pretty much standard fare. No big news, no new stimulus measures, no new grand plans to boost growth, um, as we touted last week was the expectation. So a little bit of the uh, hoping trade has come out. Um, Chinese stocks, they had a big open. Um when they came back from their holiday, I think opened up 11% or something, but uh, or shot up 11%. Uh, but uh, that has faded somewhat after that uh, state news uh, took a bit of the wind out the sails. Um, whether this is just a bit of a setback or what, we don't know. Um, they have got their own hedge funds and financials in buying stocks. So I hardly think that's going to dissipate. It's probably still a massive. Uh, BTFD in Chinese stocks, and no doubt all the latecomers are now coming to the party uh, and we'll start chasing it higher, which probably means we've got a bit of a topping. But uh, anyway, we know what's coming from China. We're now, again, still in a position where they might drop a few, lob a few more kitchen sinks at it, but now all the uh, talk has got to turn into action and we've got to see some uh, reaction from all these moves, which is not going to happen overnight. Uh, you got any thoughts on China at the moment, mate? Yeah, first of all, on, on when when we look at what happened on the uh, on the equity markets, I think while the Chinese markets were closed, uh, people uh, found refuge in the in the Hong Kong uh, markets, and uh, we've seen a bit of a, a, a Caesar kind of effect, right? Um, uh, as well, I think some uh, let go of their Hang Seng and, uh, and 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 what other futures perhaps they were in, and then uh, bought bought the rest, the more traditional ones. Um, yeah, I think your um, your ass your assessment of of the situation is correct. The market is is living on um, on hopium. Um, we all know that despite geopolitics, um, China is supposed and 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 should still be. Um, some kind of an um, 
en engine of the world, um, especially for Europe uh, as well. Um, and they may be uh, maybe a little bit disappointed, but I don't think we've seen the end of it because if we look at all those rate cuts and uh, plans that they put in place over the past weeks, um, those it's the China economy, the, the big economies. Um, all, although the US is, is is a pretty dynamic economy, but if you if you look at the older economies, let's say uh, like like Europe and and maybe China being so vast is can be ranked into the same uh, um, bucket. They it's going to take time for for everything to um, to show up. So I wouldn't say uh, that this is um, the start or the end of. But uh, and and it's going to take time. Now, the moves we see is is a bit typical of of what I've been calling those accelerated cycles in what we see in the market now. Everybody wants to to jump uh, um, from the left to the right hand side of the of the ship uh, when when somebody else spots a whale, and um, that is what we see now. When we see these outside moves, we've seen, um, for instance, if you look at uh, how the yen has been behaving over the past uh, months. Um, even even a year now, really, um, those those very big moves and the mar and even the bond markets, the 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 market is constantly um, swinging the pendulum around. And um, I think we are going to see the same in China. But um, I, and I'm, and I'm actually going to say that we may even have to wait for 2025 to see completely clear on what on where China is going to go. Uh, in the meantime. I would suspect that after those uh, knee-jerk reactions, investor will, investors will turn around and still um, keep geopolitics in, in, in the back of their mind and perhaps not jump fully into, uh, into, into, Chinese, uh, into Chinese assets. So I think we are in for a period of um, volatility over there. And then we will see when... Uh, when the dust will really settle, whether they they get their uh, economy back on uh, back on track, they, um, they everybody is is accepting that that five percent is what they need as a as a growth, and many people think that they will miss. But then we we will see what the Chinese come up with their uh, uh, come up with as as their own numbers, because we know that they are most of the time a bit uh, massaged uh, as well, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, mate, absolutely. Um, just want to answer Ali quickly. Um, yeah, if you if you do follow our feed um, and some of the analysis pieces that go out, you can often tell by the chart who put what up and who wrote what. Uh, so it was Blake who did uh, dollar Swiss yesterday, and I did dollar CAD this morning. Um, yeah, I don't know what positions you took, Ali. Uh, buy the, did you buy off support in dollar Swiss? Um, I don't know what you did in dollar CAD. Let us know. Uh, obviously, we'll have a look at that uh, as well. Uh, right, moving on, um, over in Japan, um, a little bit of a reminder what an uphill battle they've got over there uh, to get wages and the likes higher. Uh, we saw overall wage income of 3% coming in as expected, um, down on the lower revised 3.4% previously. However, the worst news from that and it's not shown there, of course, uh, is it? Nope. Is that uh, wages on real terms uh, fell 0.6%. Um, previously, it was up 0.3%. It was expected to drop to minus 0.5%. Came in at minus 0.6% real cash earnings. So that's, that's the number that Japan is looking at, the government are looking at. They want real wages to get into positive territory. Um, so as I say, a little bit of a reminder that uh, they've got a lot of work to do over there. Um, now, here's something, uh, and it might explain a lot in terms of some of the moves we saw in August. According to the Ministry of Finance, uh, their latest records, um, they bought a record amount or a record amount of US sovereign bonds were acquired in August, um, which... At the moment, or did at that point, look like a good trade if they were getting in yields uh, up in the high three nines, four percent area. Um, okay, was that uh, Japan locking in some yield there while well, uh, yields are still crappy over there? I spoke, well, I, I spoke about it and on the shows. Um, I all I, I spoke about that, that they were putting their money to work, and and I still think they did. 
Um, well, it, it's it's two two things really. Um, you buy bonds when you think the yields are going down, or you buy bonds in the advent of something happening in your own country. And that's what I said at the time. I think Japan is is putting in its money to work. You you can get over uh, well on a yearly basis, uh, and uh, it depends for how long they they keep it. But even if they keep it only for one quarter, they will still get. Uh, uh, if you look at the one the one year or two years, uh, let's say if you if you keep it for a quarter or two quarters, you will you will get at, as much as you get in the JGB ten years. Um, and I think it's a case of putting their money to work in the advent of what's what uh, the Bank of Japan was going uh, was going to do. But um, yeah, I spoke about that at the time. I said like really, um, and that was one of the reasons why I wasn't really well, actually looking at at levels to to get rather long. But I do think that they did most of it on a on a hedge basis, so um, it did not have too much of an impact on uh, on the dollar yen because actually we saw dollar yen coming down, and they need to go unhedged if if we need to see an impact on uh, on the dollar yen, right? But yeah, um, I, I think it's it's um, is that case parking parking money for for somewhere somewhere uh, relatively free if you do it on a on a on a hedge basis because you don't um you don't risk the the effects you you pay it away straight away but you don't risk uh, the effects uh, if you hedge it right uh, but yeah. yeah i think they they are they've been parking their money there and then uh, waiting for for the japanese uh, for the japanese uh, uh, yields to 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 go higher to then perhaps get back into uh, japanese bonds but that may have to wait uh, for 2025 and that is something that we will have to keep a close eye on, because if they if they are going to do the switch at one stage, then you are going to see a, a big move in in U.S. bonds and uh, and JGBs as well. And actually, with the size that they have, they could actually pull uh, uh, U.S. yields higher if they sell a lot of bonds uh, and and repatriate. So we will have to. Um, Keep an eye on when when they start to uh, to have several weeks of of going the other way around. But I do think that they are still waiting for the Bank of Japan to put um, the yields at levels where they feel comfortable of repatriating some. Yeah, and just just to uh, just to for, to confirm because uh, I, I can't remember um, this mm. uh, this MOF reporting that's reporting of financials, not the government and the MOF buying bonds, right? Come again. The this MOF report that show a record amount of bonds bought in August, US bonds bought in August, that's reporting of financial institutions and the like buying bonds, not the not the Japanese government. No, I think it's uh no, I think that there, there, there should be uh, I haven't seen the report, Ryan, but there should be different uh, lines in there. Um on on reporting what they did uh in uh, in, in detail. But I I haven't seen the report. I'll have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, I need to probably have a look. I should have had a look at it before I started the show. But uh, anyway, we'll have a look at that afterwards. Um, uh, Economy Minister Akazawa, um, just talking again about the uh, cash earnings, said that the decrease in real wages for the first time in three months is not good news. Um, and then went on to push the party line that the government will create an environment where real wages continue to rise. So you can tell they're keeping a close eye on that data. Uh, over in Kangaroo Land, the RBA minutes were out. Uh, a load of every which way waffle, as per usual. Uh, probably they discuss scenarios for lowering and raising rates in the future. And uh, these three lines in the minutes sum it up perfectly. Policy could be held restrictive if consumption growth picks up materially. Policy could be tightened if present financial conditions are insufficiently restrictive to refer, return inflation to target. Policy could be eased if the economy proves significantly weaker than expected. Um, all bases covered there by the RBA at the moment. Uh, they can't lose. Um, they also said it's not necessary for the cash rate to evolve in line with policy rates in other economies. Other Basically saying that they're not going to follow other economies if uh, everyone else is cutting rates by big chunks it doesn't mean they're gonna jump on board and follow suit um but i bet they do if uh, the case arises um rba's house up was out later on saying us cpi moved closer to target australia's cpi hasn't 
Well done. Uh, they're waiting for core inflation to move sustainably to goal. Uh, and inflation in Australia is proving very sticky. And bringing down inflation is a big job not yet done. Um, so he's taking a slightly hawkish tone in those notes there, saying they're still not, uh, not gained that magic word, confidence on inflation coming down. Uh, one of the ECB hawks, Kestrel Kazakh, says... They expect continued cuts of same of the same magnitude unless the economy does worse than expected. Uh, but then he says data points to an October interest rate cut um, and inflation is not fully defeated, especially in services. Um, Hawkey Holtzman, one another big hawk, says inflation is on the right track, but it is not defeated. Uh, ECB's Vasley says an October cut doesn't necessarily mean another in December. Um, but an interest rate cut in October is an option, so he's not fully behind it. Uh, it says markets aren't dictating our moves. Um, one of the Germans, ECB's Nagel, says he's open to a October rate cut. So uh, it's uh, no surprise there, given the state of the German economy, that uh, they want more rate cuts over there. Um, here's one of the reasons why. Oh, wrong one. One of the reasons why he wants a rate cut. Um, industrial production year on year down 2.51%. Though they did get a bit of a boost on the month, up 2.9%. This data is really up and down at the moment. Um, we're seeing factory data, as we saw yesterday, uh, coming in much weaker. We're seeing industrial production a bit higher. Um, it's really up and down at the moment. Some big swings in the data, but it's all still really looking negative there. So uh, that's why they're pushing for further cuts. Uh, Bank of Italy sees a slight GDP expansion in Q3, slight. It's uh, going to be par for the course. Um, back to Germany, their economic minister or spokesman from the economic ministry confirmed the report that the economy is likely to shrink by 0.2% in 2024. Um, over in Spain, things may be looking better on the fundamental side, uh, but Spanish truckers are apparently going to go on strike in various dates. End of October, pretty much uh, most of the way through November to strike dates, then into December. And from December 23rd, their strike will last indefinitely if their demands are not met. So... Uh, that's two days before Christmas, so they're going to be taking a nice bit of time off then by the looks of things. But as much as their economy is doing better, uh, there's still problems uh, underneath the surface, particularly those truckers. Over to the Fed, Kashkari says we have a lot of confidence. Inflation is on its way back to the 2% goal. Uh, he said the reduction in new rents gives confidence housing inflation will decline. Um, he's not seeing signs of resurgent inflation. So there's a couple of lines that uh, could well kick him in the arse come the CPI data this week. Um, a big focus of that CPI data will be all the housing stuff, sheltered uh, and rents, or only equivalent rents and that sort of thing, um, which has seen a bit of an uplift of late, uh, especially coming after it's been coming down. And a lot of Fed heads have been talking about that area of inflation coming down but it went up it's gone up the last two months uh, and gone up quite a chunk as well so that's this is cpi data is going to be one where people are going to be picking the bones out of it uh, rather than just going on the headline number um anyway feds uh, muslim says more rate cuts are likely given the economic outlook he supported a 50 pip cut but says further moves should be gradual uh, feds kugler said we'll support additional rate cuts if inflation progress continues as expected, but wants a balanced approach to make progress on inflation and avoid an undesirable slowdown in jobs and economic growth. Since the labour market has started cooling, but the Fed is looking at trends, not single data points. Um, US consumer credit data was out last night as well, just something keeping half an eye on there. We've got uh, a big gangbusters, 26 billion um, last month. Uh, well, I think it was just a bit lower than that, and it's obviously been revised up. Was expected to come in at 11, 
1.8 billion came in just under 9 billion. So a big wash out of that number there. Nothing really of note in the uh, consumer credit data to signal any red flags being waved. City, they've uh, another one, they've folded on their 50 pip cut for November in the FOMC. They're now seeing a 25 pip cut, joining a long, long list of those who got it wrong yet again. Uh, Goldies, they see S&P ending the year at 6,000. They think the stars are aligning for the stock market through year end and beyond. Um, that's it. That's all I've got. Anything else uh, you've got, Kay? No, I think you, you've you've covered everything. Gold is also uh, pretty upbeat on uh, on Chinese assets here. You said they, they, they see... Uh, yeah, they see the the corner being turned. Um, perhaps it's an early call, but uh, as we said, could be uh, could be the call if they if they succeed. Uh, we'll see. Um, no, I've, I have marked, really... they've marked a top. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or they've marked a top. I, I oh, saw them. Uh... Yeah, or, or they've marked the top. No, I haven't seen anything. It seems. Um, that the ECB officials are pretty much aligned. That okay, we've got the occasional uh, what if. Uh, 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 the data here or there, but um, the main countries are behind uh, behind an October cut, so looks to be uh, a done deal for the ECB next week, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. That uh, yes. that was pretty much now done oh, no. last week. That uh, you know, Lagarde, what she said, and everyone else since, yeah, it's absolutely bang on for a cut in October. Yeah, mm. and and but but it it should be gradual. Um, that that's what I uh, that's what I think. It uh, it should yeah. be. Uh, it should be gradual. They 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 may not uh, go and do those fifties unless uh, all of a sudden the German hawks uh, go all uh, all panicky about their uh, about their negative growth. Uh, but um, okay, I, I I don't think uh, that that will warrant uh, next week a uh, bigger bigger cut for for now at least. Um, yeah, it seems to be nailed on. Um, yeah, it, 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 the conversation prices with, though. It's what? We don't find it back in the prices. The market is uh, extremely cool about it. Extremely, uh... yeah. It, it has been forecast or has been telegraphed, I should say, the last yeah. couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think the reason, one of the reasons we discussed this last week, the, the reason why we're not talking fifties here at the ECB is because obviously it's there's more than one country involved, and you've got countries like you know, Spain and Italy and, you know, mm. some of the other southern states whose economies are doing okay. Um, and so that sort of would rule out why they would need to go a, a 50. Obviously, if you're just looking at Germany as a whole, they should be cutting 75s, more, more than 50s. But uh, as we know, the Eurozone isn't one country, so they've got to take it all as a whole. But I, think, mm. I think the market's seeing that and thinking, right, that we don't need to get too dovish on the, them lot. But it is a shift. You know, they were signaling they would go at forecast meetings and now they're going to stick one in the middle so it is a little bit of a dovish shift yeah, because you say yeah. not market yeah. taking no, in its track yeah and it's not worth it we've seen the shift happen right we've we've spoken about that about uh even the hawks starting to turn like kazakhs and uh what's the other guy uh um well on, only holtzman is still living on the in his in his austrian mountains there must be something strange in those in the air up there but um all the rest uh even the <clears throat> Even the Finnish uh, hawk, right, uh, has, has come down uh, uh, from uh, from his uh, hawk hawkish flight. And um, what's his name again? Uh, oh, doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Um, Ren, Ren. Ren. Oh, Ren. Yeah. Yeah, Ren has also uh, come down. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, it looks that that we are going to get uh, some gradual cuts, but. Yeah, it's um, if it's not a surprise, the market tends not to trade too much of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, right, well, let's have a quick look at what's coming up today. Uh, not uh, not an awful lot, I don't think. Uh, quick look through there. Uh, no, nope, not an awful bit of trade balance data from the US and from Canada. Uh, we do have uh, a load of Fed heads speaking as well, popping up and ECBers and what the likes. So uh, that's all going to be pretty boring, no doubt, unless we get anything that we haven't heard before, which I doubt it. They're all going to be talking their book. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 
data front is going to be particularly quiet, uh, as it often is after uh, an NFP week. So uh, we'll get to see on that. Ali's got a question. Um, you took a dollar yen long, tried to ride it through the break of 148, closed 80% of the position, and the rest of the position tried to ride but failed, so we moved the rest at break even. Um, I don't know. What, I'm not sure what your question is, Ali. <laughs> uh, what are you asking? It, it uh, doesn't matter what your lot size is. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the question is you're asking there, Ali. You're talking about uh, different trade sizes. The, the mentality, if you're talking about the mentality of a trade um, and your trade size, like if you go a bigger trade size, does it hit you psychologically? You get more fearful, you get more panicky that you don't want to lose because you've got a bigger trade size. Um, if that's the case, you, you are trading too big. Again, like I said to you yesterday, mate, you, you need to focus on getting the trades right first. Forget about the money. Forget about the rewards. Get the trades right first. Get into your rhythm of making more than you lose. Once you get into that, it becomes mechanical. It becomes boring. Trade entry, trade management, all that sort of stuff, trade risk is boring, okay, because – for me, it's boring because it's the same thing every time I trade. Risk, stops, management, everything before I hit a button. That's all boring shit, okay? The excitement comes after you've pushed a button and then you can have nothing, you have no influence over where the price goes from there. But everything else should be boring and mechanical. And if you can get in that state of mind, then the amounts don't make any difference. It doesn't matter whether you whether you're trading. 10 grand risk on one trade or $500 risk on one trade. It doesn't matter because your, your brain has been trained to think in that those boring terms. Okay, so get the method right. Worry about the money later. Okay, that comes afterwards. Um, anyway, let's have a quick look round and about. Uh, while I'm sitting here on bonds, might as well have a quick butchers at those. Um, have seen a little bit of easing off the highs. Um, some of this may be on the back of just a bit of overextension, maybe on the back of uh, the China disappointment, because we are, okay, I wouldn't call it risk off that we're seeing, but the market has a bit of the hopium trade that this China moves has brought has, has washed out a bit. You know, all stock markets, are, most stock markets are currently in the red, apart from the US, uh, in terms of futures and the actuals. Yields have been nudging lower across the board. Commodities have been coming down, copper down, um, you know, uh, commod currencies coming lower. Um, we've just seen a bit of disappointment from all that China stuff. Yeah, uh, that that is one thing. Um, I think uh, still some lingering, well, lingering, still some um, geopolitics, um, and this 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 may be one other thing now playing as well is the is the re repeated hurricanes over in the US uh, that that may create a bit of additional uncertainty. Um, I just see Angela there saying like. Uh, Long equities this morning following overnight uh, reversals trigger. Um, yeah, uh, back to mid neutral. I, I agree on that. Um, we we still have to see the, the the fallout perhaps of those hurricanes. This this there's always a mix of things going on these days, and so you you have to plan whatever you want to do and 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 stick to it and and not let too much noise come to it. But it's never a it's never a, a clear cut risk on risk off trade um, what we've seen because for instance if you if you look at something like um, um, yeah copper weight on the Aussie but then um, the Aussie has also been uh, been affected by 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 China uh, well which which may have affected copper by the way but then you you don't see risk is never equal um, in in uh, in in other in in several instruments and. Um, and especially in the currencies and so on, um, because if if you look at, for instance, silver is holding up relatively well. I mean, if if risk uh, comes down, silver could could have gotten a beating, but it but it doesn't. Um, <laughs> it, it's very uneven. Uh, uh, for me, risk yeah. now the the general risk is very difficult to trade. But you pick 
one or the other um, to trade. Um, and we've also seen that the market is, is flip-flopping a lot. Uh, one, one day, uh, you can call it risk on the, 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 the next day, the next day risk off uh, selectively. So it's not an obvious trade, but I do think indeed this today, uh, we have this this China stuff. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, hitting the market is a big thing, uh, a, a big uh, statement. But um, yeah, it, it it must have had an effect. I'll, uh, I'm going to be reserving my my um, uh, not reply, but uh, my opinion about uh, about U.S. stocks. It's still it's still a pretty big by by the deep uh, story, but I I would love. To to see the next couple of days, um, weather related um, issues can can come into play um, as well before the week is over. Yeah, I think if, if traders who don't know how to, to look at this sort of stuff, I mean, yeah, the, the it's also a, a time frame thing. You know, you come in in the morning here in the UK, Europe, and it's all about what happened in Asia. And then, you know, the Yanks will come in in an hour or so, and then they'll start having their little move and getting themselves out for their day. So then you see a shift from maybe what happened in Asia to what's going on in the US. Um, but I think if you want to if you want to look at the Chinese situation through a clear lens, keep an eye on their stock markets to see what's going on. Keep an eye on copper because that's, you know, a big barometer of whether China's going to pick up or not uh, and this hopium trade. And keep an eye on Aussie dollar. Um, yes, there are other commodity com currencies, but... Aussie dollar is a big follower of what's going on in China and commodities. Um, so it's no surprise to see uh, that coming down. And we've actually come down to a pretty interesting level. 38.2, uh, bang on the nose uh, for this one, of this fib here. So a pretty big level. It's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of an area down here uh, around this uh, 67. I don't know where much, well, I've lost a lot of lines on my charts. I think there was, uh, I don't know where it is. Anyway, there's uh, quite a big area down here. Um, oh, that was it. It was on the uh, daily. So we've got a couple of moving averages in situ as well, just around this 67 handle. Got the FIB there, 15, 67. Got these moving averages, and then we've got this zone here. So, you know, it's had a bit of a carve up over the last few days. It's now looking like it's going to go five days out of six losing uh, after this strong rally. But we're hitting some uh, decent support, potential decent support areas down here, down to 66.60. If we're under there um, and attacking this 55, then things are perhaps looking a bit soggier for the Aussie. But uh, if it's going to bounce anywhere, this is uh, the area that it may do so. Uh, and these things keep going the way they are. So, yeah, keep an eye. If you're looking at China, their stocks, copper and Aussie dollar, and that'll give you a broad overview um because i don't i don't think gold is really moving around on the china stuff i mean we're still stuck in this range up here um still pretty tight you know 30 40 50 buck range uh i've been watching we keep getting these confirmations on the top probably need maybe another couple of confirmations on this the bottom edge of it um just to see if we're going to maintain that zone but okay yeah gold doesn't it doesn't see it would be one that you think would move a lot on china but it, it really hasn't <laughs> no i think geopolitics are playing a bigger role there um we've seen a bit of a there, oh, well there was this this triangle i showed uh we we went a little bit below now now we're back in uh, those levels here 26 20 30s are already uh already a bit of a level i i, I think it's more like geopolitics still um still um holding uh, holding gold in its grip uh, right now, um, yeah, I, and I don't have anything right there, uh, there right now because I really, I thought it was kind of enough the the, the rally that we had, but I uh, and of course we had we had a bit we having a, a bit higher yields now in the US uh, those 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 data on Friday. Um, it's not coming off too much because of geopolitics mainly, I guess, and. Um, but the way that China will impact is likely. Well, actually, if you if you see a, a complete revival in China, gold should actually be lower because they won't buy as much because they can they can stick their money back into their own economy, right? I, I mean that that's kind of the, the the way I'm I would look at it. Um, 
because when 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 they saw their economy slowing down or when they had issues, we we heard all those uh, all those uh, rumors about um, China buying gold every month. Um, if, if you trade a Chinese revival, in theory, gold should be lower, right? Um, but I think the 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 rest of the world is uh, is holding it up, and I I don't know where the next hundred bucks will come from. Um, if you look at this, this is still just a, a correction at at very lofty levels compared to where we were, um, and uh, the next move could be up into the twenty sevens, as I say, uh, as I said. But it, it really, I'm I'm in between two minds right here and now um, because we've seen an escalation. And we've seen Iran and, and and all those countries getting getting in into the mix, but um, it it didn't rally further either. So I'm I'm really very uh, very open minded here. Uh, gold, um, I I wouldn't be surprised about anything, but I know that if if it starts to get back above twenty six sixty five seventy, I think then we, then we're going to be uh, trading up in the twenty sevens uh, pretty pretty quickly, and it may come with a with a very bad surprise uh, uh, at at some stage, and and let's let's actually hope it doesn't happen because it would it wouldn't be for for the correct reason to get uh, to get up there. And yeah. Um, yeah, that's about what I have to say about gold right now. Mate. Yeah, I agree with that, mate. Um, right, just a couple from me before I pass it over to Mr. K. Uh, at eight dollar CAD, uh, yeah, as I put on the. Uh, on the tweet outs earlier on, we're up at this big, big level, this 136.50. Uh, it's one of those real historical levels that uh, has had a lot of action around it and a bit of a decent pivot point. If When we're above that and holding above 136.50, it opens the door to moves up to all these highs, 137s, 38s, 39s. Um, so this could be a bit of a uh, significant moment. The last time we were here was just post-Fed uh, when we got up to those highs uh couldn't quite hit it but we have uh, got closer this time around but that was a very significant top uh, that got marked there you can see all the way down into the low 134s before we've come back again so this is uh, a big question mark here if we break above here i think you're going to need to see it finding support before thinking about kicking on uh, so I'll, I'll be looking for more of a confirmation move above here um, I'm not. I'm not tempted to go with a buy stop um, because we we have had a lot of action around it. So I don't know. Maybe if uh, if I see a break and then a retest and it holds, I could give it a tight one and see if we push on up. But uh, for me, CAD is still a bit of a, uh, a bit of a non entity. I, I, I don't know what it's doing. Um, sometimes it's moving on oil. Sometimes it's moving on risk, and the other times it's a dollar and all that. So this one, I'm just. It's not one pair that I've got a good handle on in terms of, of how it's acting. Uh, and I like to have a good handle uh, on things like that. Um, one thing I'm going to update quickly is Aussie Kiwi. Um, got a bit of luck with this one and uh, the lack of Chinese news overnight. As I said, poll will act in the Aussie dollar. We do have the RBNZ coming up. Um, so it's giving me a little bit of profit to take in this move down my shorts from 110.40. Uh, what it's also done is give me a bit of margin um, if we remain down here going into the RBNZ. If they do go 50, if I'm wrong, and they do go 50, then I've got probably a decent amount of margin in there where I shouldn't really expect things to be busting massively higher because if they do cut a 50, uh, it might be a bit of uh, buy rumour sell fact type trade. Um, but if they come to a really dovish message that uh, it's the first of many 50s, then this will probably be motoring uh, well up through 111, something like that. Um, I'm still happy to play it from the short side, keep shorts on, um, shift it from the R RBNZ to the RBA uh, and keep a bit of a uh, position running in this one on the short side for when those guys will eventually turn and turn, they will. Um, I'm pretty confident about that. Right, Kay, bouncing it over to you, mate. Yep. Thanks. I'll... I'll... Quickly stay on the Kiwi because I I think the Kiwi yep. dollar is on an interesting level. A bit more in the um, in the medium term if you want to pass me uh, the screen. I can grab it if you want. Okay. Oh, hang on. I'm looking okay. Yes, mate. Got it. Um, got it, yeah. Yeah, I've got it. Um, here, the um, if you look at this this um, 
this trend line, um, and I've taken the, 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 the last spike high here, uh, we are pretty much on it. You look this this low here, 61, call it figure 10. Um, you, we've also seen, we are also seeing uh, moving average there, moving averages there around 61. I think this is going to be an important level here on the, on the Kiwi. <clears throat> um, sticking my neck out, looking looking at how ore uh, can do, can be a bit volatile. I think we are we can't dismiss the risk of a of a fifty BP or um, this time. I, I I got this kind of feeling that he he will want to underpin uh, the economy because he had the he, they've had this kind of like example of what uh, Powell said and did and um, it may be a bit easier for the high yielders right now because the Kiwi is still uh, above five percent right. Uh, for the high yielders, it it's, it gives them a bit of an excuse to also go for uh, for our bigger one. So keep an eye on sixty one, the figure for when the uh, the dust will settle post R B and Z. If you see a move below and then breaking back above, I think that will be kind of telling that the market was front running the fifty BPs and then uh, happy with it and then and then starting to buy Kiwi again. So. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say really after the the RBNZ above below sixty one can be uh, a decider for uh, for a few sessions here. All right, this is how I look at uh, at the Kiwi going into the RBNZ. Um, I see your question, Catherine. Okay, I'll, I'll come to that uh, in a minute. Um, quickly, silver um, here. I, you know, when when. <laughs> It, it, it a lot will will somewhere depend on China and 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 also other economic data. But if if the economic data kind of hold up, I I don't think we will see my zone here. But this is kind of a zone that I'm watching now, trying to be patient. Anywhere sub thirty down to twenty nine, sixty seventy, uh, and and thirty and a quarter, thirty forty perhaps on the top side. This is uh, a bit of a box that I'm uh, that I'm watching, and I'd love to see. <clears throat> Sorry, some continuation perhaps on on the, on the dollar side um, if we see it, and or a bit of uh, people getting a bit nervous about about growth and and taking it another buck uh, buck a buck a buck and a half lower. I'm going to get uh, to get interested in here because I'm, my long term view is still unchanged. I would love to to add again to, to I've got only very tiny left right now. Um, but I, I would love to see levels to add again. I know Stelios is, is looking at a dead higher. He's looking around here um, to, to start adding. Um, yeah, um, silver can move relatively fast. I'm, I'm going to stick to uh, to this zone here. Um, mix. I haven't looked at the mix for, for a while because I, I, I was off Catherine, but uh, we've seen that 19 is holding uh, is holding really well right um we've seen this 19 let me just see if i because it, it's not really a level that uh, that i had uh, technically in there but i'm i'm i need to i need to refresh okay i, I haven't re refreshed my max yet um but 19 looks to be a level where the market is 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 watching it uh it's a prior high just around here is the low around here high here just a low around here, and and uh, uh, earlier we went uh, on Friday we went down to nineteen ten, and then uh, and then bouncing a bit. Nineteen is your first level. If we start to get below eighteen ninety, which is about halfway of this uh, of of the move that we had uh, from July higher to that to that spike high, um, then some longs may need to uh, may need to uh, um, rethink their strategy. But I'd say along uh, for as long as we are above nineteen, it does look that it's that it's wanting to uh, to hold. Um, don't forget, Catherine, as well, that we are closing in on the on on the U.S. elections, and they will play a big role in in all things Mexican peso. Okay, we heard from um, uh, Trump that uh, if he if he gets elected, he's he's threatening to put uh, loads of tariffs on on cars imported from Mexico. Um, he's going to 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 be he's going to be a hardliner, yeah, um, against uh, against Mexico and therefore also the Mexican peso. And then I haven't seen any news 
about Scheinbaum, what she uh, what she said about those uh, judges or so. But if only we would take that, it does seem to me like the market has had the news now and is waiting to see whether anything bad will really come out of it. And, and that, for the time being, it, it looks to be pushed a little bit to the side. So I would I would say watch the data in Mexico, watch the, the, the rates in Mexico. Let me quickly check when the next, uh, not before November, the next uh, Mexico. Uh, but but watch out also what's happening on the data and watch uh, out for, for politics and especially the US politics. Um, Euromex, look, we had this, okay, we had the big move lower. Um, we, we, we didn't reach the, the, the 50%. But we had um, the the next one here move uh, move lower in the in the in the euro mix, um, and we reached somewhere at the sixty one point eight percent. So for the for the for the euro mix in the medium term, watch this uh, this zone here around twenty two fifteen. For the very short term, we are trying 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 to to break and hold below this this prior zone here around twenty one twenty thirty. That is already in the short term, perhaps a little bit of a pivot, a pivot area. But I, I, again, I don't have a, I don't have a very firm idea on this. Um, but it's still a, a, a plus ten percent currency. So when things go quiet, I would say it would have the tendency to slowly, slowly, slowly drift lower. Okay. Um, I think we can't couple it to 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 equity markets. We could in the past, but but now we have to uh, we have to watch it in a in a different way. And I think the political side of things is is more going to be deciding. But if it's quiet on the political side, I wouldn't be surprised if we slowly 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 drift lower on this one. Okay, but bearing in mind those that the, the those levels on the, on the dollar mix. Okay, because if the dollar mix hold. Uh, Euro mix will likely uh, hold as well. That's about what I can say on the mix. Just to uh, chime yeah. in quickly, because there were a couple of decent headlines from Mexico okay. uh, last week. Uh, Shine Bomb said she's going to be pushing for twelve percent wage hikes next year, ah. and um, the deputy governor Banxico said that rates are likely to stay on hold for some time now. So, uh, okay, so that 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 rate likely rate. explains uh, the the fact that the Mexican peso has strengthened somewhat. Well, somewhat five okay. percent. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, a, that's all right, a all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Cheers, mate. Um, I think we've said enough for today. I mean, you're a dollar. Um, I think you're a dollar is 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 one that. Oh no! I wanted to show dollar yen door because look where we stopped this morning. I'm uh, I'm slightly disappointed because I missed an entry here for. For a pip in the in the dollar yen, I had a bid in at thirty three, and they printed thirty four as a low. But uh, okay, anyway, I mean, next uh, could be worse. Could be raining, as they say. Um, look where we stopped in this dollar make, in this dollar yen. Okay, prior high in the twenties, prior high in the twenties, one forty seven. Uh, we went through, and now we went to roughly retest. It's also still the seventy eight point six. I know we've already um, uh, put in another move, but. It is, there's, there's still, because it's been a high here as well, I still would like just to keep this line in here, because I think it's a, it's a relatively um, short term, short term, important little level here in the, in the low 147s on the dollar yen. And for as long as that holds, I think this, this perhaps correction, and then we could, uh, we could continue to see it a, a, a bit higher um, again. Now, I'm coming back to what uh, we said yesterday. Don't forget the Japanese officials have already uh, been a bit vocal for the start of the week. So I'm, I don't think that we are going to really ramp higher. Um, but I, I still have kind of an idea that we may be in for a retest of, uh, of 150 at some stage, providing that, and when is it on Thursday? Or tomorrow, Thursday, right? The, the CPI in uh, yeah, America. Yeah. Providing that CPI doesn't crash away, okay? CPI will be the next big one here, uh, I, I, I think. All right, but uh, it, it's um, yeah, it is it is significant is a big word, but it's interesting at least that we're holding um, this uh, this retracement level and just around those prior highs. If we get 
Below there, I think then we may uh, we may see one forty six and a half, or perhaps even uh, even uh, back a bit lower. That is it for me. Back over to you, Ryan. Thank you very much, mate. Good stuff as always. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us here at the Flow Show as always. As two, uh, have a great day ahead. Trade safe, trade well, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.